Welcome to the CEO of Destiny podcast, where you will find the tools to fulfill the purpose of your generation and wildly succeed in the marketplace. And now your host, Andre J. Benjamin. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the CEO of Destiny podcast. I am your host, Andre J. Benjamin, and this episode is an interesting one. You've got to fight for your right to create. Yes, this time we are going to be discussing what does it mean to fight to protect that creative instinct that is within every single one of us. So I'm excited and delighted to be here with you on this episode today. I hope that wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, outside, inside, on the move, driving, walking, jogging, sitting in your office, sitting somewhere doing mundane things, sitting somewhere doing fun things, but trying to multitask and listen to this podcast, I pray that it is beneficial to you. So this episode is short and to the point. I really wanted to talk about how we've got to fight to protect our creativity. I had an interesting talk with my children, and as I was talking to them, I was talking about how, hey, you know what? As you guys get older, I want you to really guard your creativity. I really want you to guard your desire to be creative. And they were like, what do you mean? Why would you have to do that? I said, hey, you know, when you look around, the way the world operates is that after a certain age, they talk about it in fourth grade, they say that people go to fourth grade and their creativity dies in fourth grade. Why? Because they switch the testing and the type of curriculum that comes forth to be based upon right and wrong and take you out of that imaginary land, that kind of area where you were able to uh, in, invent your own characters and daydream and really just do that play where you're by yourself and you don't even need action figures. You could take a box, you could take a piece of, a piece of paper off the floor, ball it up and turn it into a whole universe of possibility. So what does that mean? I think what we have going on is we have a system that tries to conform us into its image. It says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, uh, to not be conformed, to not be shaped, to lay ourselves on the altar of the Father, to offer our bodies up as these living sacrifices, just like Isaac did, just like the king and our Lord did, but to give ourselves as these living sacrifices. Um, and that's our reasonable act of service. But then the next verse is imperative. In, in, in Romans 12, 2, it says, do not Whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever, whatever, whatever you do, do not be conformed or shaped or uh, pressed into the mold of the governing systems, of the values that we see around us that go contrary to the scriptural mandates, the dictates of the king, of our father, uh, but to be transformed by renewing, bringing our mind back again, to re is to do over again, and to make new is to cause for us to go back to our original mind, the original thought, the mind that we lost back in the garden, go back and be transformed, just like that word is metamorphosis, just like a caterpillar goes into that cocoon and comes out as a completely new being, a butterfly bust out, and if we cut that caterpillar out prematurely, it's slosh and it will die and it won't formulate into those strong wings that lets it take flight. The same way, we are transformed. We go into the transformation chamber when we open up the perfect instructions of the Father and we allow for Him to create within us and to recreate that mind that He put inside of us that has been subdued under the pressures of a system that is hostile to his dictates. So we've got to fight to be creative. And I, I, they asked me, what does that mean? I said, you've got to protect that. You've got to consistently create. You've got to, I don't care if it's a sentence, a stanza. I don't care if you create a new character. I don't care if you make up a song. I don't care if you make up a scene. I don't care if you do something uh, in your room, change something, put something in a different ordering and configuration, 
Ta allow your mind to create. Don't go to bed without creating, without producing rather than just consuming. Get in the mode of being that prosumer as, we, as we've talked about in previous episodes. Being one who, who is rewarded based upon your productivity. What did you produce that created value for others? And I believe that improving the lives of others, that bringing forth that value that comes from heaven's government into the earth, that soon coming kingdom is uh, a mode that we can get into. So I want to encourage you today to really be creative. I want to encourage you today to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask, think, or even imagine because of the power that's at work within you. You have that potential, that dormant latent ability, that unused power, that reserve strength that is lying within you. How can you awaken it? How can you reawaken it? How can you stir it up? by giving it a focus. How can you give that ability that is within you responsibility? How can you take what's inside of you and harness it and direct it so that it goes out and brings forth value to others? How can you, what is it that you know that you can share with others through a medium of something funny? What if it's comedy? What if it's online? What if it's offline? What if it's a greeting card? What if it's a uh, a, a new game, a new board game that allows families and friends to come together rather than being locked onto their devices, uh, some sort of screen, that they're limiting their screen time. Or, or what if you're going into that screen world and you're pushing people to get on and offline? You see this whole mixed reality uh, deal or deal of technology emerging with augmented reality, mixed reality, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality. How can you take what you have, your knowledge, your know-how, and how can you apply it so that people can understand the value system of the kingdom to, to serve one another, that the greatest of you will be the servant of all, that you're literally washing the feet of humanity through the gifts and talents and abilities that lie within you. How can you take the information and share it with others? How can you combine your gifts with others? How can you get people around you who are smarter than you in an area to where you're literally that novice, that dumb person in that area, and you're saying, hey, what if you take your ability and your talent and we put these things together, we do this joint venture, and we go and we impact many lives? You never know what people can do, what they can bring to the table, how you can collaborate, how you can cross-pollinate, how you can integrate the two uh, schools of thought that you have so that you bring this tremendous value to others. So I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you that you have eternity set in your heart as it says in Ecclesiastes 3 for you set eternity in the hearts of people and they cannot fathom it from beginning to end. I want you to understand that there's also this uh, deepness that's within you. For the heart of a man is deep waters and the man of understanding draws it out. There is dormant latent ability. There is waters of wisdom. There's waters of understanding that are laying in people waiting to be drawn out. All it takes is a person who has revelation, and that is you and I, who have spent time in the presence of the king, getting his information, talking to him, getting his heart and his value. And if you're not that person, I suggest that you yield your life to the king. Jesus is the king. His name is Yeshua. It means uh, salvation. The Lord is salvation. The owner is salvation. He is the one that redeemed us. He lived that sinless, perfect, stainless life. He never disobeyed the decrees of the Father. He is the Father made manifest in the flesh. He has revealed to us the heart and the will of our source, the one who created us, and he wants for us to be restored and reconciled. He's brought us the ministry of reconciliation, which means to take us and bring us back into alignment so that we can get the inheritance which was prepared for us before the foundation of the world, the kingdom, the nations of the earth, the real estate of planet earth belongs to the meek, the self-controlled, Matthew 5, 5. So I know that was kind of a lot, a mouthful, but I want to encourage you today. Don't go to bed tonight without creating. If you're listening to it late at night, stir yourself and do one more thing. I don't care. Draw, write a note, write a paper, a blog post, an entry, a chapter of that book. Dictate it. Speak it out. I don't care. Create, 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 create a new meal, create a new recipe, create a new garment, create, stitch something together, put something together, build something with your hands, build something, do, shape something, create something, produce something, produce, 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 because you were designed to be a producer. You were designed to be a dominator. You were designed to fill the earth with beauty. 
bring beauty, take it from out inside of our heads and export it out into the marketplace so that it can bring value. Don't just create junk, create things with a spirit of excellence and let it touch others. But get to that first iteration. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done for yourself. Do it. Value yourself enough to produce something. So I hope that this was a helpful, useful, informational episode. I wanted to encourage you, to inspire you, to get you to ask yourself some questions. What's holding me back from creating? What can I create today? How can I take action? How can I close my eyes today with producing something? What is it that I have lying within me that I know? Sometimes we go to bed and that one dominant thing is lying in the back of our head. And we thought we executed all these other priorities. But to be busy does not mean to be effective. So you have to measure. I have to measure. That's what I found in my own life. I don't want to preach at you. I want to tell you the truth and say, hey, in my own life, when I analyze it, I have to measure my day by was it effective. And I have to see, am I doing what the Father expects of me or am I living by other people's expectations of me? Because other people might have expectations of me and they say, oh, you're doing phenomenal. But the Father says, no, you know this is the one thing you're really supposed to be doing. This is what I designed you to do. And you're in the center of my will. And that's how you bring me glory. John 17, 4, it says that, uh, Father, I have brought you glory by doing what? Completing the work that you gave me to do. And that's what we do. We are here to complete work, to produce a value, to produce uh, something tremendous that will release others into their destinies, to walk in their lane, to go in their <laughs> to go in their path, right? To go get locked into their assignment. And we are all interdependent upon one another. Every single one of us contributes something. That's the only thing that makes us equal is our value. That each one of us are have a value as a life. No life is not valuable. All lives are valuable. That's the only thing that makes us equal. We're not equal in ability. We're not equal in intelligence. We're equal in the fact that we can tap into the author of intelligence, the infinite intelligence, the father, right? The father from heaven, the, the, the father who has bestowed his grace, the father of lights upon uh, which there is no shadow of turning, that we can look to him who is our author and our finisher, the perfecter of us, and say, hey, father, source, what's going on? I, w I really need some insight in this area. And he says he gives wisdom to us who liberally ask. So I hope this episode was inspiring, encouraging. Check, do an inventory, create something today, create something tomorrow, create something all week, get in the habit of creating, schedule creation time, make that time, produce something because you have a value that is innumerable. I can't even count it. You were so valuable. You were so valuable. You were so important. You were so important just as you are that Jesus gave his very precious blood for you. You were bought with a price and you were not your own. Therefore, glorify God in your body. All right. Shalom. Um, go to the website. Leave us a review. Go to iTunes. Give us a review. That helps us get bumped up in the rankings and it, share it with others. Because we desire that you be a part of this CEO community. Go check out the resources, ceoofdestiny.com. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Do us a favor. If this was useful in any way for you, please go to iTunes and leave us a review. Reviews will allow others to easily discover the podcast. If you'd like more information and to receive a free download, rediscover your destiny, go to ceoofdestiny.com. Thanks again and tune in next time.